Did my orders go up? And did my ACOS stay, stay the same? What you want is you want to see your sales go up and you really want to see your ACOS, you know, try, if anything, coming lower. But And if this is your first time watching one of my YouTube videos, consider subscribing to my channel and leave me a comment below. I love talking to my awesome YouTube community. All right, so now that you've downloaded your Amazon PPC report, let's go ahead and look into the data. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, now when you're optimizing your Amazon PPC campaigns, you're gonna to have to filter this data because if you don't filter through this data, it's going to be very confusing. So one of the easiest ways to do this would be to click on data, then filter, and I always like to remove any blanks. Okay, perfect. So here's part one of gathering profitable data to feed into manual campaigns. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you can even, um, when it comes to your advertising ACOS, you can arrange this by lowest to highest ACOS, or you can even arrange it by sales. In this case, let's do, uh, I wanna show the top sales for this particular product first. Okay, so now that we've pivoted to that, we can see that all of the sales starting from the absolute max all the way down to the keywords and, and product placements that only have one sale are gonna show top to bottom. So at the top, we have a keyword that's doing pretty well and you can see the click-through rate and you can see the ACOS. Okay, so obviously, if this is your auto data, even your broad and phrase data, you can see, you can make a list of keywords that you're doing the absolute best. So for example, if you look at the keywords and your target is, let's say 20% ACOS, look at all of the keywords and ASINs that you're showing up for with 20% and or less ACOS, and you can go ahead and add those into your manual campaign. So if these keywords are not already in your manual campaigns, boom, that's super easy. And you know that all the keywords that you're feeding into this, into your manual campaigns uh, have are good performers because you're seeing the data right here, right? The data is telling you 20% below, just copy and paste them into the manual campaigns. Super easy. Now, part two to this, so once you make your list, and it's also important that when you're looking at this list, you look at this at least once a month. I try to do it every two weeks, but I really recommend uh, that you do it at least once a month because every single month, you know, you can have keywords that could potentially have a really great ACOS, um, but if they're not in your manual campaigns because let's say it showed up for in an auto campaign and you never even considered that keyword before, maybe it didn't come up in your research, it's really good to actually just piggyback of, off of Amazon on um, where you're making sales. So just take all that data and where there's 20% or below, you can feed that into manual campaigns. And you can, in the back of your mind, or not even the back of the, your mind, your stats are gonna be incredible because you're only feeding the winners there. Now, like I said, part two to this is you, not only do you need to feed these keywords into the manual campaigns uh, to stay profitable, but to add to your profitability, you also need to add negative keywords. So negative keywords, let's say you're selling charcoal teeth powder uh, a, and you know you really want to maximize your sales well a good keyword to add would be as a negative would be paste um, or brush or mouthwash so f with all of those um, it's not your product exactly they would be good keywords to add as a negative because Amazon's going to show your product right next to all these other products because now they have you know substitutes close match for their auto campaign so they're going to sh really show your product everywhere so you really want to refine uh, how your product is being shown because it's going to really save you a lot of money in ad spend and it's also going to increase your sales because you're going to be ultra focused in your campaigns so the easiest way to do that would be to look at where your ACOS is the highest so let's see Let's go ahead and only select, uh, let's see if there's an easy way to do this.
unselect them. So these keywords, I uh, will probably keep 50. So these keywords, uh, or ASINs for example, um, have a high ACOS. So now that we're looking at this, we're saying, hmm, okay, let's go ahead and clean up our campaigns. Even though there's a few sales there and you know there's some impressions, there's 26 clicks, 27 clicks for one sale, that's a bit high. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, you're gonna wanna use this information that's showing up right here. So in this case, it's a keyword and an ASIN. And you can add these keywords and ASINs to an, your negative keywords. And you can add it to all your campaigns and especially in your auto campaign. So now moving forward, your product's not gonna show up for those keywords anymore. And I recommend that when you're adding negative keywords, you use negative exact and you use negative uh, phrase. Use both of them. Okay, so in the instance of the charcoal teeth whitening powder, you'll have paste as an exact and phrase negative. You'll have toothbrush, mouthwash, uh, you get the picture there. And over time, you know, as the months go on, you're gonna have a really strong negative uh, list of negative keywords. And again, like I'm telling you, the better your Amazon PPC campaigns perform, especially over time, the better they're performing. And they're performing better because you're adding better keywords and you're adding uh, more relevant uh, search terms to your product by reducing irrelevant placements. I hope that makes sense. You're increasing your relevancy by reducing the, um, the friction, right? You, anytime your product is shown and the customer's trying to get a toothbrush, but Amazon's showing your charcoal tooth powder and someone clicks on it and they're like, no, I really just want the toothbrush. That's friction there because you're not showing up for exactly what the customer's uh, looking for on Amazon. So over time, as you're reducing the friction by adding negative keywords and you're increasing your relevancy by adding keywords that you're doing, you know, at least 20% below ACOS, then over time, your PPC campaigns are going to start um, performing better and better and better. Because what I've noticed that Amazon is doing and at Zonrush, I mean, we've helped, we help hundreds of sellers uh, optimize your Amazon PPC campaigns and so we are able to see a ton of data and what we're able to see clearly like clear as day is that they are prefer Amazon's preferring uh, campaigns that are one feeding new variables to their algorithm and two have are actually sellers who are actually taking uh, proactive measures in not only feeding new variables, so you're adjusting your bids, your budgets, but also increasing their campaign relevancy. So you're continually adding negative keywords, you're feeding new keywords into your campaigns. Um, if you're taking this proactive measure, you're gonna do, you're gonna see that Amazon's gonna reward you with more impressions because you're making more sales, right? And at the end of the day, Amazon wants to show products that they're making money off of, okay? And so, it's really that easy. I, I really try to, you know, break it down as, as simply as possible for you when you're looking at your report. Um, so you're adding your your keywords that you have a 20% and below ACOS, and you're adding your negative keywords. And then over time, because remember, PPC is not, you know, 30 days and everything's perfect, right? It's going to take time. It's very similar to the way the Facebook ad algorithm works. If you have a pixel over time, you're Facebook ads perform better and better. So we're seeing the same thing with Amazon. You know, the longer our campaigns are running, right, we're feeding more and more relevancy, adding negative keywords, adding more relevant keywords. Over time, you get more and more sales and, and you're starting to build up that momentum. Uh, so this is to really help you build that momentum. Okay, so now that you've be began to download your Amazon reports, sift through the data and you begin creating your manual campaigns that have you know your target ACOS and below you're starting to put those keywords in your campaigns you're adding the negative keywords uh, you know the ones that have really high ACOS you're adding them as negatives now as your campaigns start producing results now you're going to want to look at a few different things so part one is getting the, the data from the reports and feeding it into your manual campaigns and your auto campaign so you're doing that. That's that's always going to happen at least once a month. 
The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pay close attention to your budgets. Now, if you're in a competitive category, for example, and you start and you see that you're running out of your uh, daily budget spend, you know, like every day or fairly often, withhold your refrain from um, increasing your budgets based on Amazon's recommendations. And I mentioned this in a in a previous video, but you really want to take control of your ad spend. And the best way to keep your campaigns, you know, strong, healthy, and producing profitable results for your business is to incrementally increase your budgets. So you're starting to see, okay, you're performing well, maybe you're running out of budget, and you're like, okay, now what? Do I double the budget? Do I 10x the budget? You don't want to 10x the budget. Though in your mind you're saying, well, if I'm producing, let's say, a 20% ACOS, I'm going to like 10x my budget. And so I'm going to get even more sales at the exact same ACOS. And that's not the case. What's going to happen is you're going to be, Amazon's going to show your product a lot more, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be healthy growth. It's just going to be fast growth. And it also doesn't mean that you're going to increase your efficiency. It just means you're going to spend more money. And so you really need to monitor your campaign efficiency. There are a lot of variables that it's really hard to take account for, like other sellers adding the exact same keywords to their campaign. So bids are going to go up for particular keywords. Other sellers could be rate, um, optimizing the percentages, the placements. There's a lot of variables to account for. So before you, you know, 10x your, your budget on your, your really strong campaigns, incrementally increase your budgets. 10 to 30 percent on a weekly basis and it's very important that you monitor it on a weekly basis because if you're changing your budget too often or even too soon you're not going to have enough data to make proper optimizations so in order to make proper optimizations you need to do an experiment you need to you know change one of the variables and after seven days look at the data measure the results Okay, so one of the best time frames that we've seen at Zonrush is seven days because with seven days of data, it's pretty safe to say, okay, this is going to be your, your, um, your median, your average uh, result. So what does that mean for you? So in seven days, you increase your budget 10 to 30%. So if it's at $25 a day, try $35 a day. Okay. And once you change it to $35, wait seven days and, oh, I forgot to mention, make sure you take note, whether it's on an Excel sheet, you write it down in, the, in your notes somewhere. Before you raise your budgets or even begin increasing your bids, take a snapshot, if you will, of what your current performance is. So, for example, if you're uh, right here, you're saying, okay, my ACOS is 24%, about 8,600 8, in sales, 2,100 in ad spend. I'm going to increase the, the daily budget from $10 to $15, $20. Okay, you make that 10 to 30% increase. Then after seven days, you look at the exact same campaign and you're going to see, okay, my ad spend. My ad spend went up because you obviously increased it. Did my orders go up? And did my ACOS stay, stay the same? What you want is you want to see your sales go up and you really want to see your ACOS, you know, try, if anything, coming lower. But if, you're, if your um, strategy is increased sales, you know, maybe to help with rank and, and things like that, then it's maybe you're a little more okay with a higher ACOS. But you really want to monitor the difference in percentage. So, for example, it goes up to, let's say, $2,500 and sales go up to $9,500 and ACOS goes to 26%, I would be okay with, okay, doing another 10 to 30% because sales went up, you know, ACOS was a little bit more manageable. Some instances, you'll even see ACOS come down. And then the next week, okay, another 10 to 30%, measure the results, and you're going to continually do this process until... You're going to do it until you begin to see that your um, your costs are outweighing your benefits. OK, so if you're starting to see your your costs go up, but you're not necessarily seeing more sales, then 
the following seven days, and this is why it's important to keep that seven day track record on an Excel sheet or, or in your notes, then you just have to go back to the previous variable. And it's really that simple. You go back to the previous variable and then you can begin looking at your bids, for example. So this is the best and most strategic way to um, increase your budgets because it allows you to actually see what's working, you know, what the optimal budget is for your particular campaigns. And it's going to change over time, you know, as you're adding more negative keywords, as you're adding more profitable keywords, you know, this is going to change over time. So it's very important that, you know, you're at least looking at your budgets and tr in, uh, either going up or down incrementally on a weekly basis based on the previous seven days performance. So we've already looked at your reports and we've already looked at optimizing your budgets. Now let's look at how to efficiently optimize your keyword bids. So you'll open up one of your manual campaigns and go ahead and sift through the data. And with bids, you're going to have a very similar framework as you would have with the budgets. You know, you're incrementally increasing your budgets, monitoring performance in order to find that optimal balance. Well, same thing is said for your actual bids. So when you're looking at your bids, and this is going to change month to month because you're going to be adding more keywords and you're going to be pausing keywords that are you know underperforming for your business. So you'll you'll look at your keywords and you'll say, okay, you know some of these keywords were doing really well. Um, let's go ahead and increase these now, ten to thirty percent. Ten to thirty percent is really it's not too it's not too heavy and it's not it's enough to make an impact for your business. Uh, you don't want to double butt your bit. I mean double. Double budget is what I was going to say, not double butt. But you don't want to double your bids, you know, from one day to the next because you haven't monitored the performance, you know, at let's say it's a dollar and you go to two dollars. Well, what if you could have had profitable results at a dollar twenty-five, a dollar forty, a dollar sixty, a dollar eighty? You're going to want to see the progressions instead of just jumping, you know, from one dollar to two dollars as an example, as a um, for a 100% increase in bid, you're going to want to look at how you're performing throughout the, the steps towards increasing your bids. So uh, if we look at this, we've just recently actually updated, the, uh, uploaded um, our updates to these campaigns. So uh, we've already made the optimizations here. But if, for example, you're looking at your own campaigns, and you're saying, okay, I have, you know, an ACOS that's profitable for me. Uh, you know, making good sales. Let's increase, you know, from 94 cents, Amazon's suggested is $1.57. Let's go perhaps a little closer to Amazon's suggested. So maybe $1.25, for example. And then seven days is the optimal time frame. So you would increase this to $1.25 and then say, okay, this is what my sales were the, the previous seven days. Now what are they? Did your ACOS go up? Did your... Uh, sales go up and did ACOS stay the same, you're going to want to pay attention to all these variables because it's going to allow you to optimize efficiently. Okay, 10 to 30 percent is what you're going to want to look at now in, when you're increasing your bids. Now when you start to see, you know, maybe there's keywords, you know, that haven't produced any sales or if you see an ACOS, you know, 100 percent right there, you can see we pause these keywords. These are paused. And again, you're going to have to look at this at least every week or every two weeks because remember, you're adding more keywords to the list. So some of these keywords at the bottom here that don't have any impressions or sales are keywords we've recently added based on the, rep the reports we're getting from uh, Amazon. So we're, we've made a few sales there on the auto campaigns. So we're saying, okay, now let's feed that data into the manual campaigns. And as you know, I always recommend when you're doing your manual campaigns to at least target every single match type. If you don't want to target every single match type, at least do either exact or phrase, because I understand it is very time consuming. And luckily for us at Zonrush, we are a bit of a hybrid Amazon PPC agency where we're half AI software and half human optimization. So it's you get the best of both worlds if you're working with Zonrush, for example. And if you're doing this manually, I can see how it's a lot of work, but it's necessary over the long term if you want to see profitable results. 
So you can see a lot of these don't have any uh, impressions or any orders at all, and it's because they're new, so that's fine. And you know, as time goes on, you're gonna start to see keywords that are doing well, keywords that aren't doing so well, you pause them and rinse repeat for as long as, you, as uh, you're selling on Amazon. And this is how you're gonna continually optimize your campaigns, right? The first part is you look at the data from the reports, you feed the reports into manual campaigns, you look at your budgets, right? You put a cap on your budgets and you incrementally increase them 10 to 30%. And then you look at your bids as you're adding more keywords to your campaigns. And after you're doing that, then you're saying, okay, now let's incrementally increase our bids 10 to 30% above. Or if your ACOS is, let's say, you know, just a little bit above your, your break even, maybe even lower those bids. It's not always increasing 10 to 30%. You can also continually lower keywords that maybe you're making sales, high relevancy, but it's a hyper competitive keyword. Maybe it makes sense for you to lower 10 to 30 percent so that way you can stay in the ring for that keyword but you're not paying top dollar to make a sale and this is one of the easiest places to start if, especially if you're a beginner selling on Amazon FBA this is probably one of the easiest uh, Amazon PPC tutorials that'll show you basically how to you know go from a beginner to an expert all in one video that was the idea behind this video, I wanted to show you, you know, basically, and there's a whole lot more you can do with placements and targeting your competitors, but this is the perfect place to start, right? It's the easiest place to start because you're just feeding data into your campaigns. It's cyclical, right? It's, it's going in a circle. You want to feed better results continually, but you need to change um, the variables that you're feeding Amazon because like I mentioned earlier, the more you're converting, the better your campaigns are performing, the more impressions Amazon's gonna give you. Now, if you want to learn how to not only look at the reports and you know do, do basically some of the very basic things on Amazon, which is uh, some of the things we went over in this video, if you want now more uh, hacks or very strategic placement optimizations, then you're going to want to check out this next video coming up. I literally laid out how you can not only optimize everything we went over right now, but also optimizing your placements. And placements are so crucial because like keywords and like uh, product targets, your placements are going to really navigate your business into extreme profitability because you're feeding Amazon new variables. You're feeding Amazon what where you're converting the highest and that's what you want, okay? So check out this next video coming up. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And of course, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, consider subscribing to my channel. Leave me a comment below, especially if you're new. Um, engage with me and if you have any comments, uh, if you have any questions, I'm sorry, leave them in the comments because that will be the best place to get a hold of me. I try to read all of the comments and I try to respond to everyone in a timely manner. So leave me a comment below and of course give this video a thumbs up if you love this content. And I'll see you guys on the next video.